Now, hedging your bets, our next guest says investors should consider seeking out value in U.S. equities to hedge against excessive exuberance. Think AI. Joining us now is Morgan Stanley Wealth Management CIO Lisa Shallot, also head of their global investment office. Lisa, great to have you. Starting more broadly, you say you guys are skeptical that aggressive earnings projections based on the idea that margins are going to expand, that that's going to work out. How big of a risk is that for equities overall? Well, I'm not so sure that, that it's a big risk in the very near term. It's really just a question of where do we think investors should be focused to exploit what I think the potential uh, of generative AI is. And so one of our you know, uh, uh, pieces of advice to clients is to acknowledge that many of the stocks that have you know, formed leadership for this market have been among the generative AI, what we would call enablers, right? The NVIDIAs of the world that are helping deploy the infrastructure that allows uh, large language models to run. Uh, but for, from where we're sitting, the, the focus should really ultimately turn to those companies uh, that are going to be the adopters of the technology. And that's real, really where the margin improvements are going to come from, not inside tech, but outside of tech. So where uh, we believe in software and services, financial services, healthcare services, media services, business services, uh, uh, payroll processing services. These are all areas uh, that are ripe uh, for massive reengineering, but it may take a couple of years, uh, but we think the payoffs are going to be huge. Okay, I hear you, but FOMO in the market is a heck of a drug, right, especially on a day like today where you've got those names like NVIDIA powering the S&P to an all-time high close and the Russell's flat. So strategically, how do you move without missing out on some of these tech bets that are still soaring? Yeah, look, I think investing is always uh, a exercise in risk management, and that's what we always encourage um, clients to focus on. If you're going to take risk through rich valuations, um, you have to really have an idea of what you're gonna ultimately get paid for that risk. Um, from where we sit, many of these high-flying names, while they have produced extraordinary performance, um, are richly valued. And as a result, um, they may be dependent in the long run uh, on lower interest rates to sustain those valuations. And data like today, uh, you know, uh, where we got hotter than expected uh, inflation numbers, perhaps not as bad as feared, uh, but still numbers that were sufficient to push out the probabilities uh, of an imminent Fed rate cut. They were sufficient to show a backup in yields, um, we're surprised that uh, markets were, were pushing to expand margins on, on the th frothy parts of the market. And we just, you know, prefer to take the long view uh, and focus on some of the, the names that are underappreciated. They're mm. still growth names. I want to be really clear. Things in healthcare, things in software, um, you know, these are growth areas of the market. Mm -hmm. They're just not priced to extremes. When I hear you talk about the CPI report, are you pushing back your own internal forecasts of when we can start to see rate cuts? Um, no, we're not. Look, we have always been in, in kind of the May-June camp. We're now, you know, kind of uh, leaning more into June. Uh, but the reality is, is that these, uh, the data today are not supportive of a Fed narrative that says we've got to cut immediately.